Hey there, Vanagon Addicts. It's Ken Wilford here at Vanagon. Today I'm going to do a brief tutorial history of the Vanagon, an overview of what Vanagon models there were, what the differences were in the models, and how you can kind of spot what Vanagon you're looking at just by looking at it. So the Vanagon was actually known as the transporter in Europe. Uh, some places you see it <clears throat> known as the T25. Some people call it a T3. Uh, but, you know, whatever you want to call it here in the U.S., they decided to take the word van and station wagon and make a little word marriage out of it and make it into a van agon, van wagon. And there you go. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> it started in 1980. They originally were air-cooled, um, and they had basically the exact same engine as a 79 bus, except for, you know, a couple of slight differences in the exhaust ports. That's pretty much it. So, they started out in 1980. They were air-cooled. They went with the air-cooled engine for about three and a half years, from 80 to 83 and a half. And then they, re you know, decided because really of emissions reasons they had to go water cooled i'm sure they had seen the handwriting on the wall for a while i mean they had switched over to water cooled engines in their cars back in the 70s so you know the bus was kind of like the last holdout um, all of the vanagon models had the engine in the rear okay so on your air cooled of course you have the engine in the back uh one of the ways you can tell the early model Vanagons, this one has uh, square headlights. They had round headlights, okay? Here in the U.S., <clears throat> they had round headlights from till about 1986, okay? So anything that has round headlights, you could suspect it to be an early van. It's not necessarily so. People retrofit things, but that's a good first indication. Also, they had chrome bumpers on the front and back. If it was an air-cooled, you see this lower grill here? They did not have that. So this was just still like steel encapsulated right there. Uh, and so you just had an upper grill only. So if you had, see a Vanagon with round headlights, just an upper grill only, <coughs> chrome bumpers, okay? No side cladding. See how this has side cladding, side skirting. Um, usually they also had chrome trim around the windows, okay? Uh, back here on the back, okay, they would have uh, this button. They would not have this Volkswagen logo on here. This button for this would be actually be like a more like an Audi, little small button, smaller button that was poking out more. And they did not have a rear wiper, okay? So uh, all those different things. And so that's a one way you can tell, okay? You're looking at a van from a picture, you see that it does not have a lower grill in the front. Most likely it is an air-cooled. Okay, so let's move on. So that was 80 to 83 and a half. <clears throat> I'm not going to really give you my opinion on that. This is not a buyer's guide. This is just an overview guide. Um, also, another thing you'll notice on the earlier vans is the mirrors were these kind of cheesy, like black plastic things that really aren't that great. But they work. They're, they're, they're kind of a weak point. Okay, so that was those, 80 to 83, air-cooled. Next in line, of course, is the Majestic 82 diesel. <laughs> okay, so here uh, in the U.S., uh, the 82 diesel was the first foray into the water-cooled realm for the Volkswagen van. It was more like a beta test, I would say, than anything else. It had... Worse horsepower than the air cooled. I think they were rated at around <clears throat> around 50 horsepower, maybe even slightly less than that on the diesel. 1.6, the same exact engine that's in a Rabbit uh, of the same time frame. In 1982, so you would see a lower grill now, a still round headlights, chrome bumpers, as we just talked about, the same similar kind of rear um, button in the back. For the rear hatch release, no, you know, back uh, wiper. And also, it would say diesel L, I think, on the rear hatch. 
Okay, so they just did that model in 1982. They were all manual transmissions only, four, uh, four speeds. And that model was just 82 only. Now, after 82, they did do diesels for <coughs> in the U.S. for 83 and 84 as well. They were all non-turbos. The 83 and 84 model actually were five speeds. And I've owned some of them. Uh, they're slightly nicer in that they refined the cooling system a little bit more. They, they started using some of the newer components for the cooling system. Uh, but there's not much difference, really, between the 82, 83, 84. They're all still very, very underpowered in a passenger van, not to mention if you have a Westie and put a bunch of weight on it. Um, <clears throat> I've owned a lot of diesels, and the Vanagon diesels are almost undrivable, in my opinion, because they're so underpowered. All right, let's move on. So now we have 83 and a half. <coughs> oh my gosh. I apologize. 83 and a half, we moved to a 1.9 water boxer. Okay, again, we still have round headlights. We have a lower grill. We still, we have chrome bumpers. Okay, no, no side cladding. Uh, we still have the same, similar bumper, uh, the similar tail section area, um, except for uh, some of them did have a rear wiper. Okay. And so 83 and a half to 85, they had the 1.9. <clears throat> if you got an early 83 and a half, they have these crazy coolant hoses that look like a mad scientist made them. Uh, and then they actually had two versions of them. Then they finally went to a third version that they used for the rest of the run of the 1.9 that's a lot more modular. The early ones were all big, huge, one-piece spider preformed hoses that you cannot get anymore. Um, so if you're looking at a 1.9, you want to avoid one of the 83 and a halfs if you can, uh, or you may have to retrofit your coolant hoses if you want to ever replace them. They don't have made those hoses in over 20 years. So um, 83 and a half to 85, Okay, 1.9 liter, and like I said, it, it looked very similar to the earlier ones, the air-cooled and the diesel in the round headlights, the chrome bumpers, the floppy mirrors, the floppy black mirrors, okay, um, and they came in automatic and manual transmission, okay. Now, the air-cooled also came in automatic and manual. I did not mention that, but they, they did. All right, so let's continue on. Now, 86... To 92 okay we have the advent here in the u.s of square headlights we have of course lower grill because it's water cooled uh 86 and 87 years they still had the chrome bumpers the no side skirts they still had the chrome trim around the windows but you know they were advancing okay uh they had a 2.1 engine they had uh, automatic transmission, a manual transmission. They, a lot of them had the rear wiper. Okay, you also have a synchro option, right? Full time, all wheel drive, and a lot of you folks know all about that. Okay, so uh, 86 to 92. A lot of people are saying right now 92. What are you talking about? 92. All right, so here in the U.S., 86 to 91 is all we got. If you have a 91 Vanagon, that's the last year it was sold here in the U.S. But, of course, in Volkswagen, in their style, they had a 1992 last limited edition. And you could get one in Europe. So I've had customers call me. They say, I have a 92. Is this what parts you know, are going to fit it? So I just include that now. All right, so we see the square headlights. We see um, a, and after 88, they went to the aero uh, bumpers, the spoiler underneath, okay, uh, the side cladding, okay, so anything normally 80, in 87, they started going that way, so some of them had, like Wolfsburg Editions had the aero bumper and like this little piece, they didn't have this piece in the middle for some reason, <laughs> then they had the back aero bumper, in 88, they kind of went full aero bumper 
on everything from 88 to 91. They had the aero bumpers. Uh, most of them had alloy wheels, not this particular kind, but they had, you know, the 14-inch alloys. Um, and, you know, they actually also lowered the van about an inch. Okay, so uh, 88 and newer, they lowered the van about an inch to make it um, a little bit more, less like wind blown around and ride a little bit smoother. I think it definitely accomplishes that. So this model we're looking at here, of course, is my 91. This is your, the ultimate in Vanagon technology, 2.1 uh, liter engine uh, and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, that is just basically a basic overview of the different years and models and kind of how you can spot one of these in the wild. You know, the later ones, they were expensive. So they basically gave them all the bells and whistles. Like anything 88 and newer had the aero bumpers. They had the side skirts. They had uh, the rims. They A lot of them had power windows, power door locks. You know, you can, again, 87s, they went to this nicer uh, mirror. The early ones were painted black. Later on, they painted them color key to the body. So I'd say that's another like 80 and newer tip off is if you see the mirrors are color keyed to the body. Um, that's probably most likely 88 and newer. Also, I think around 88, they have this Volkswagen logo in the back hatch. Okay, so again, you know, I'm trying to give you tips. So when you're looking on eBay, looking on Craigslist, okay, you can take a look at this picture, the clues, and kind of put together what you're seeing, even if the person that's selling it, sometimes they don't even know, you know, what motor's in it. They don't know what, you know, body style. Now, again, you could have any motor in this car. You know, right here, here's another car that has a Ford Focus engine in it. Okay, is there any cues to that? I mean, a little bit, but if you're 20 feet away, how do you know? Okay, so we're just going by what's supposed to be in there um, and that way you kind of get a general idea of what you're looking at and you can kind of make some decisions you can help you as you're looking through lots and lots of vehicles online and you're thinking about purchasing something you kind of know okay I want this particular body style with the aero stuff I don't want that I want the chrome stuff uh, I want the round headlights, I want the square headlights, and you can kind of really filter your search um, a little bit more by having that knowledge. So I hope this general overview helped you guys. You notice I did not say anything about Westphalia's or anything like that, um, or I didn't really give you a lot of opinions about the different engines and the different body styles. I mean, the basic chassis body... Is pretty much the same on all the years the only one that was different was the synchro the, there's a whole video I could do on that but if you're buying like a regular passenger two-wheel drive Vanagon or even Westy the body's essentially the same they you know added things on the outside they changed the headlights look they changed a few little things on the rear hatch but your overall body chassis is pretty much the same and it's a really good chassis um they actually did do more in the later years for sound deadening as well so 86 and newer you're going to notice when you go to shut the doors it's going to make more of like a thunk noise and the earlier ones it's going to make more like a tin you know tin can trash can lid noise okay when you go to close it that's due to see you hear that thunk right it's due to extra seal things around the door, extra sound deadening in the door. You know, inside the walls, there's actually a bunch of extra sound deadening. So, you know, there there are differences under the hood. Um, and as they were doing it, they were, you know, adding value to the car over time. But it's really up to you what you want to do. I mean, some people love the more simpler the better they don't care about any of the modern amenity things or any of that stuff other people they want it to be you know as modern as possible okay none of these had airbags okay none of these had 
ABS or any type of you know modern um, collision system or anything like that but they did have you're sitting up high you have a good view all around you uh, so if you're a good driver and you're paying attention you know you can avoid a lot of accidents you're sitting up high again so if you crash into a car typically the car goes under the vanagon and doesn't actually hit the front smash in the front uh, so you have like a little advantage that way as well and I've seen these in crashes. They do really well. I've seen them in rollovers. Um, I've seen them in crashes. And I've never seen one get that damaged. So maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just lucky. But uh, I haven't seen anything. They actually do really well. So that's it for this video, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. Let me know if you want to see more videos. I will get a Westie here. We'll go over everything in that. I'm going to do another video on, you know, the interior and the controls and what the differences of the interior is. But I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys in the next video.